This is Witches, Bitches, and Dead People with Intuitive Oracle Jamie Hearn. Jamie stirs the cauldron with witches, shamans, healers, psychics, and mediums who bravely share their power and give you insight into what conversations with dead people really look like. It's probably not what you think. Sometimes hilarious, sometimes macabre, and always informative. Hey there, fellow seekers of the mystical and magical. Are you through with wading through the endless online noise, only to be met with judgment and skepticism about your otherly interests? Enter Rooted in Magic, your haven of curated wisdom and fantastical knowledge. Join our private membership program designed for the magically curious. Explore ancient secrets and metaphysical wonders. Unlock the mysteries of your true self in a 100% judgment-free zone. At Rooted in Magic, you're free to journey towards self-discovery at your own pace, supported by a community that understands and celebrates your uniqueness. Visit our website today and start your journey to understanding who you are, why you're here, and where you're going. Embrace the magic within you at rootedinmagic.com. Hello and welcome back to Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. I'm Jamie Hearn, and today I'm super excited to chat with Rebecca Johnson. She's a trauma coach expert with 18 years of experience. That's a lot of trauma to help people through. That's yeah. that, that, Thank you for contributing that to the world. Thank you. <laughs> She's passionate about utilizing creative, efficient methods to uncover unconscious limiting beliefs and emotional blocks in order to return to a state of integration and wholeness. Like, I'm pretty sure we all need you in our lives. <laughs> she specializes in innovative in, in, in innovating with healing techniques such as breathwork, somatic movement, sound and frequency healing, inner child work, and internal family systems, which I just learned about recently. So awesome. I'm sure I want to pick your brain a little about that. In addition to holding a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, she's a pioneer and world-class expert of EFT tapping, one of her favorite modalities. She believes that we hold all of the keys to healing within ourselves. I love that. Welcome and thank you for coming and sharing your magic with us. Yes, thank you for creating this space where people can share. I I love, I went and looked it up and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm, I like, I resonate with witches and bitches. <laughs> well, I had one of my friends <clears throat> on the company and I said, you should come on and talk about your company. And he goes, well, which am I? I was like, all three. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> all three. Um, so we, I know we first connected over me looking for somebody to talk about tapping because I find it so fascinating. Um, yeah. You do all of these really awesome things. So tell us a little bit about you and how you started on this path. Okay. So I, I actually, now where I'm at in my life, like I love looking back at how I got here. When I was on the path, I was not always loving it because it was not always clear to me where I was going. But um, I was getting my master's degree at Utah State University a long time ago, 20 years ago, or somewhere around 20 years ago. And <laughs> yeah, and I was, I had kind of inadvertently ended up there. I started out studying actually history and poetry and English and mm -hmm. Then once I had a degree, I didn't, it didn't translate into a career. <laughs> and so I started kind of looking around and um, I was teaching in special education for a little while. And what I noticed there was that a lot of the kids that I was interacting with seemed to be more with trauma than necessarily like they couldn't learn. 
Mm. It seemed like there was some kind of interference. And I, I didn't feel like I could make the kind of difference I wanted to make, like in the education system. So that led me to go get my master's degree. And in my master's program, uh, when I was learning these different modalities for helping people heal, I was starting to get a little discouraged because I felt like a lot of times I could see the value of someone coming and being able to kind of unload what's going on in their world and be heard, and be listened to. But I would still feel at the end, like we didn't really move the dial. They might feel some relief, but it doesn't feel to me like I'm helping them actually make sustainable changes in their lives. And so, you know, I'm learning these different modalities and learning how to apply them. And I just was kind of a little disillusioned and discouraged by what I was learning, like the talk therapy route. And near the end of my program, I had a personal traumatic experience where my grandfather was killed in a plane crash. Oh, he was a really um, predominant caretaker figure in my life. So it was a, I know some people aren't as close to their grandparents or maybe don't even know them, but I, mine was like a, like a dad. I understand that. And and I'm taking care of my 93 year old Graham now. So it's interesting the, the things that come up around having a close grandparent. So, yeah. So we were really close and it was a shocking loss. I'd been with him the night before and then he ended up passing away in a plane crash the next day. And I was almost finished with my program and the way that it impacted me, I kind of got into this headspace where I just didn't care anymore and I didn't want to deal with school and I didn't care if I graduated. Well, I was really lucky because I had a professor who was like, she was a, she was for sure a witch. <laughs> Whether it's self-proclaimed or not. <laughs> yeah. She wouldn't have necessarily identified, but she was a German a single woman professor at my university that came to me and was like, you will graduate. Like I will, you cannot throw this away. And so, but I really was in this pretty despondent place and I was very offline and I didn't totally understand why back then I didn't know anything about trauma. And even in my education, we didn't really talk specifically about trauma anyway. Uh, she was like, you can't just give up. And I was kind of like, yes, I can. <laughs> and she's, she's like, like, no, let me explain. You're not. <laughs> You're not. And thank God for her. Like she, I'm really grateful that she stepped in in that moment. So what happened is I was struggling like, okay, how am I going to rally to get myself? I still had to write and defend a thesis at this point, And I had a little bit of coursework left. And I wasn't getting along with my professors because I had really different ideas about how I wanted to help people heal. And I couldn't really get access to like very much information that was resonating with me. So there was a lot of conflict there and I didn't want to deal with that anymore either. But randomly or not randomly, a friend of mine said, there's this guy here in town and he's a massage therapist And I went to him and he did this really weird thing with me is really weird, but it really helped me. I felt a lot better. Maybe you could just go try it. And I was like, okay. Um, So I thought I was getting a massage, but what the man did with me was he introduced me to EFT tapping. He made me feel better. Worst case scenario, I get a somewhat of a massage out of this and you know, it doesn't matter one way or the other, but it was a complete life changing moment for me because he did this really weird thing with me where you're, he was having me tap on these points and having me talk about what had happened. And, and somehow during the process of what he was doing, it went actually way back past my grandfather's you know, passing away to something from early childhood that had a similar feel to it. And I was like, how did he, at the end, I literally was like, what did you just do? Like, what just happened to me? And after that, I was like, 
I'm going to do whatever it takes to learn how to do this. Now in my school, they were like, nope, that's woo woo. There's no science to back it up. We're not, you can't even, we, I couldn't even talk to him about it, but I went off on the side and you know, the, the founder of EFT had printed this, like had this free PDF, huge document. You could just print off of online, off of his website for free. And so I printed it and I studied everything. I, you know, like read it front to back. And then he had, you could purchase DVDs of his where he's like in hotel conference rooms, having people come up and sit in front of him. And he's doing this tapping process with them and showing what happens. And I'm just tapping along. So I watched every video I could get my hands on of his that were kind of like his very rudimentary training system. And, um, and then I, after grad school, I ended up in North Carolina running a therapeutic foster home. And there happened to be a woman in Chapel Hill, right down the street from where I was working, that was a, she promoted herself as a EFT tapping um, coach. And, and so, like, okay. I, yeah. I see the message here. <laughs> so I started working with her and I had a lot of early childhood, um, trauma, but I wouldn't have called it that at the time. And I didn't totally understand that, but all of our sessions kept going back to like, what is happening now and how it would lead me to something else and where that kind of pattern started or where that belief started or, so anyway, I got a lot of benefit out of getting to work with her and my mind is works really well to like learn while I'm doing. It's very, I learn very experientially. So that worked really well for me to both heal and learn how she was helping me heal. And then I decided by this time, it had been a few years and it was starting to get a little bit of momentum on the East and West Coast few people were talking about it and therapists were learning it. It really wasn't mainstream at all. It's still not totally mainstream, but it has been researched now and they could tell you why it works now and what it's doing. Well, but I only know superficial like meridians <clears throat> and energy flow. So you'll have to give us a little insight into that too. Yeah, I can tell you. So what um, I ended up going back East and training with some of the pioneers who had trained with Gary Craig, who's the founder of the original founder of VFT. And I think it's fascinating the way he discovered it. He was an engineer. He was not like a mental health practitioner. He started doing Chinese acupuncture for some healing. And then his brain was like, well, I wonder if you could just tap on these points instead of stick needles in them. And he was doing all these really elaborate combinations of ta uh, Chinese acupressure points. And then he's like, I wonder if you could just like do a sequence of hit all the main points while you're doing it. And that's how it was born. And it was fascinating to me that some engineer is really who tracked this and discovered this powerfully beneficial tool that it's like accessible to any, anybody can learn how to do it. Well, I really love that. It was just curiosity on his part. Like, Hey, I yeah. wonder if you could do it this way. Hey, yeah. what about this? Like, and then he's like, Hey, I'm going to try this on my friend who has a water phobia. And he went and stood next to the swimming pool with her and did it. And then she had this big release and jumped in the water. And I was like, this is amazing. So I learned everything I could about it. And I started working with other people 18 years ago. You and, and for a long time, all I did was tapping, but over the years it led me into these other tools and modalities. And I kind of learned how to, how to integrate them together and utilize them like in a, in kind of, I guess I wouldn't say I have some like trademarked way that I do it, but I definitely don't only use EFT tapping. And I find that it like really works well with like internal family systems, which I didn't learn until only a few years ago. You know, it wasn't necessarily like well known back when I was being right. trained and educated. Well, and I think that that's like your particular magic is bringing p the pieces of everything that you've experienced to the session with your clients. Yes. I don't know if I could do one singular thing. Like 
I do a lot of Akashic Records work and medium work and Theta. And like, if you asked me to just do one piece, I'd be like, uh, I don't no. know if I know where the, the lines blur, like. <laughs> well, and another thing I discovered after tapping with people for a long time, I started learning how to get them to get the same results, even if they weren't tapping or even if they were imagining tapping. Oh, cool. And I got where I was like, I can get people, I, I see how this is all working. And I, my brain just started to kind of do the same engineer type thing that the original um, founder did. And I just figured out ways to make it even more efficient, make it work even better. And I've seen other people doing really cool things with it too. Like just kind of taking it and innovating with it and saying, well, what if we tried it like this? You know, what if we used it in this way? So Right, because it's not going to hurt you. No. no matter what you do, even if it's not as effective as another approach, it's not going to cause damage. No, it doesn't <laughs> cause any harm at all. And it's also very forgiving process, you know, like you don't, if you mix up the tapping points or you don't really know what to say, like you can just sit there and think about the thing that's stressing you out or that um, is really bothering you or the pattern or whatever, you can literally sit and think about it and tap. And even if you don't know what to say, you can still make some progress with it. Super and cool. Help yourself um, re regulate, you know, and that's like the thing, that's the huge buzzword now. Like you want to regulate your nervous system, regulate your nervous system. And the one thing I do want to say to people listening, this is not about getting you to not feel things and bypass right. them. This is about feeling it and working your way through it to the other side, which is so beautiful. Well, and that's a really important distinction because muting and numbing isn't getting rid of, of the experience. It's just stuffing it. So yeah. If you don't work through it, it will come back. It will come back. And a lot of times we, you know, early on in my healing journey, I just thought my job was to get myself to feel better. So you can use any tool to bypass or you can use it to heal, even meditation. You know, if you're like, I'm just going to sit here and meditate till I don't feel this thing anymore. Like if you don't work through the thing, the thing is not going anywhere. I mean, it might go down deeper, but it's not going away. <laughs> For people who don't have any knowledge about tapping, can you give us just a basic overview of what it is? Yes. So Tapping, so EFT stands for emotional freedom technique, not to be confused with emotion focused therapy, which is another very popular modality that I do actually really like, but they're, they have the same acronym. That's why I'll always, you'll hear me say EFT tapping so that people who know the other EFT are not confused. Thank so the EFT, that. yeah, so EFT tapping is a modality where you are tapping on acupressure points and I can show you the sequence. So you start out on what they call the karate chop point. Does it matter and left or right hand? You can do left or right. You can switch back and forth. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever feels comfortable to you. Most people kind of use their, their hand that they write with to tap, but it doesn't matter. So you tap on the acupressure point. You're tapping lightly. You don't need to tap hard. It's just like a gentle tap. And you're kind of on the kind of fatty part of the hand, not necessarily the fingers. And then, so you start out here. And usually what you're doing is, this is where they do what's called anchoring. So this is where you kind of start really tuning into whatever it is that you're going to start working on and you start speaking about it. Usually the practitioner that you're with is going to set it up for you and you just repeat what they say with the exception of, which I think is so beautiful. If the practitioner says something that doesn't match what feels more true in your head, then you correct it for the practitioner and the practitioner should then take what you're saying and integrating it. So it's always most accurate, what it matches, what, what feels most true to you. So it's a really good way for the practitioner to get cues from you, but it also sets you up so you know what to cue them. 
which oh. might sound a little confusing, but it's like, if I'm saying, even though I feel sad, you might say, I, I feel mad actually, or I feel scared, you know, then I'm just going to immediately shift to go wherever you're going. So it helps us track each other when we're working together. So then you move from the karate chop and the anchoring into where you really start tuning into whatever it is that you're working on and you're tapping on the top of your head, right where kind of my... That feels really good. Yeah. If you really pay attention to these acupressure points and how they feel when you're tapping on them, they're, they can be very soothing mm -hmm. to your nervous system. So you start on the top of the head. And oftentimes you'll start to want to take a deeper breath. Your body will start to relax. Not always. Sometimes if you're thinking about like a car accident that you got in or a really traumatic event that you experienced or something that's really making you mad, you may not immediately start to relax. But oftentimes eventually as you start to move through these points, so they call this one the top of the head and then inside of the eye outside of the eye, under the eye. Some people like to do both at the same time and some people like to switch sides. Mm. It doesn't matter as long as you're getting one of those. <laughs> and then under the nose and then the chin point and then the collarbone, which is just like if you were to make a necktie, it's just to one side or the other of that like divot right there yeah. in the middle of your neck. So collarbone and then under the arm is usually it's like directly across from your nipple, essentially straight under your armpit. So that one's awkward. <laughs> it is awkward. And some people hit it with the same arm and some people do the opposite <laughs> arm. And that one's a little more awkward, but I don't skip it because it, it really brings your whole system into the process. Hmm. So those are the points that you tap on and usually you're you're actually saying like um I'll give you a setup like even though I'm really sad I love and accept all of myself anyway or even though I'm feeling scared or even though I'm feeling rage I choose to accept who I am and how I feel and those statements that you're saying are really important cuz you're speaking to your subconscious and teaching it something new. You're teaching it to accept what's happening instead of rejecting it. Cause that's like mm -hmm. one of the biggest parts of trauma. It's like trying to push away or get away from how we feel or what's happening. So it's teaching you how to be with it essentially. That's super interesting. So, I mean, it's not only trauma that this works for, right? Right. People use it for like physical issues. Sorry, my <laughs> that was bugging me. They use it. Um, you can use it for health issues. You can use it for, you can just use it if you're feeling stressed. I had a client who had to go to doctor's appointments with her husband and she would get really, really anxious because of the nature of what they were discussing. And so she would come in and tap just to get calm so that she could hear. Mm -hmm. People use it before they go on stage to do public speaking. There's like a lot of different ways you can apply it. The way that I've gone really deep with it is really specifically with trauma, but you can use it for little kids when they're like really, uh, uh, you know, like fidgety and antsy. You can, you can have them sit down and just kind of start talking about what's happening, what's in their body, what they're thinking about, what they're feeling. So is it most effective if, I tap myself or like, like if you're showing a little kid, can you actually do it for them? You could tap for them, but it's best for us to do it ourselves. And that's another thing I love about it is like, it's yours. Like you, you can, you can do this. And there's a abbreviated version of tapping where you're tapping on these insides of your finger points. So yeah. like, if you don't want to do this with other people around, <laughs> I you mean, can I wouldn't care. <laughs> I don't care either. But, you know, like a little kid might not want to, or a teenager might not want to do it at school in front of their friends, but maybe under their desk, they can just do this, you know? Or, you know, if you're, if you are sitting in front of the doctor and he's telling you some very difficult news and you're starting to feel yourself really become dysregulated, you can just kind of 
do this. You can do it when you're driving, but mm -hmm. this is like the kind of version that you can do if you can't do this for whatever reason. That's super interesting and a really good tool for people to, to try out right now. Try it. Yeah, just try it. <laughs> yeah, just feel what it feels like to pay attention to your body and pay attention to what's ha what happens because we have points on our body that correlate to every everything is connected. And that's kind of the science behind it is that you, it, it's based on Chinese acupuncture and acupressure, but that we have these meridian, we have these systems and meridians in our body. And when something happens that is, pushes us into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, it, in theory, I believe the science is that it disrupts this flow of energy in our body. And so this process, it's not just the tapping, but like the thinking part that you're doing and the, and the affirmations that you're doing and the tuning into what's actually happening while soothing your body on these specific acupressure points is allowing you to like rebalance your, the flow of energy in your body. So I love that idea because this is such an easy entry point. You don't have to go and study all of the various meridians. And I mean, I don't have a extensive knowledge about them, but there, I know there are a lot of them. Yes. That's why Gary Craig was such a genius. He's like, man, like if I want, if I'm working with somebody on this kind of issue, then I guess I need to use these points. And then he's like, well, what if you just do all the main points, then you don't have to like make it so complicated because in the beginning it was a lot more complicated and he just really simplified it. Like just hit all the main points on your upper body and you're going to, you're going to get a lot of results from that. I love it. So yeah. how do you integrate EFT tapping with something like internal family systems? So for those who don't know what internal family systems is, it's basically something that Dick Schwartz started tracking when he was working with his clients that uh, he basically started to see that each of us has a, has a series of parts within us that are all performing different jobs and functions. And so he called that like the family of you. So it's your internal family system that keeps you functioning. And he started to recognize that uh, it's not that we have like all these different identities, but we do have different parts that do different jobs and they get, we bring them online or develop them at different times in our lives when we, we might need them like a people pleaser part or a part that is very shy and hides or a part that's very aggressive or there there's you could really go way in depth on IFS but that's a really like very basic understanding of it so how I use it with tapping is when someone's talking to me I'll ask them like well if that part of you could talk what would it say and then we will tap with that particular part of you and what that part is dealing with and wanting to say that's one way that i that i use it i love Another, that yeah it's amazing because sometimes if we try to think of ourselves as a mono mind well what about the so on this hand i think this way and on this hand i feel this way no that's parts of you that are doing different jobs it's way less it seems a little more scary to think of it that way if you want to pathologize it but if you just want to say like well this is a phenomenon that all human beings if you really start to pay attention like dick schwartz start was working with bulimic girls and it was like they have a part that is managing that relationship with food and he started to realize like i have parts too am i does that what does that mean about me and then he was like oh everybody has this if you really tune in and pay attention and so you can use the parts you can work with whatever part is uh not feeling like it has a seat at the table in your system essentially to help bring them online to understand that part why you develop that part what their job is how they're trying to help 
what are they afraid would happen if they stop doing their job? Because if their job is a procrastinator and some other part of you is going to therapy, like help me not be a procrastinator. Well, if I can work with the procrastinator part of you and what he calls unburden it, then, and we can utilize tapping in that process. It's not the only way, like in IFS, he doesn't necessarily use tapping, but I find they go really well together. So it, yeah, it sounds like they do. I, I feel like EFT yeah. tapping can be pretty applicable in a variety of settings though. Yeah. You can, I, I haven't found any scenario where it can't be useful. And so, of course it's not the only way, but right. it is such a powerful tool for helping someone start to track themselves. That's what I, so if someone comes to me and they've done no therapy and they don't have never done anything somatic or body oriented, and they're really not in touch with their own, like internal hearing their own, what's going on inside. Like that is the quickest way to help them start see and hear themselves and track their own self. And then we can, do other more complex things. Awesome. So I'm going to try tapping. I'm, I'm planning a trip and as part of the excursion, we're going into a cave and I'm already having anxiety about it. So okay. I'm totally going to use this. And, okay. And and that. That's I'll awesome. Report back and let you know how it goes. Yeah. And if you want to do a session before you go, I would be happy to do that with you just to show you how it works. And oh, cool. That'd be awesome. Go a little deeper with it if you want to. So if others want to learn about you and the work you do, where is the best place for them to find you? Okay. So I'm actually really excited, right? I, I created a course with a, um, a business partner of mine called we created a program called Heal Your Space. And our flagship first course is called Heal Your Closet. And we're actually launching it like in the next couple of weeks. It's in beta testing right now. But it is where myself and a professional organizer paired up. And so Heal Your Closet is for people to be able to go in and take everything out of their closet and go through all of it and decide what they're keeping and what they're letting go of. And then the things they're not sure about, or they feel it feels sticky to keep it or let it go. They use the tapping process to figure out what is their relationship with that thing. And people have been shocked and like amazed to find like, whoa, that sweatshirt. Like I did not know that's where that was going to go. And like this, (laughs) It's this really cool doorway to have like deep healing around your belongings and your space and where you live and how you function in your space. But also you end up getting a clean, beautiful, organized closet at the end and you get to learn organization tools too. So that's our collaboration that we're doing that we're so excited about. That's amazing. I mean, I don't know anyone who couldn't use uh, uh, some organizational skills and healing. Yeah, boom. It's like, and this way, you know, I've done a lot of healing where you don't really have a whole lot to show for it. You don't get like a a product or a benefit. You know, you get the benefit of the healing, but like this is like, oh cool, like my space now and my mind, it's clearing clutter inside and out. Like that's kind of our our philosophy behind it. And it's super exciting. We're going to do other courses. You know, we're going to do the bathroom and the kitchen, the pantry, the garage, but we started with the closet. Cause that's kind of a woman's like, well, there's yeah, actually really a lot perfect. there. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So if people want to learn about that class or enroll, where do they get the information? So you can go to heal your That's my website. That's okay. our website. Um, for a personal private one on work with me, um, I don't have a website, but you could just, I, m- I'm all word of mouth, all the clients that I, I work it. with. So, but if you wanted to look, look into what it would be like to work with me, you could just, what would be the best way you could message me at help at heal your space and just say like, Hey, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking into your closet course, but I want to know more. I want to work with you. That would be a good way to reach out to me. But if you're interested in the course, healyourspace.com is our website. Like I said, it's in beta testing right at the moment, but it should be, we should be launching it within the next couple of weeks. So 
Awesome. So it'll probably be right around the same time as this episode is airing. So okay. go check out healyourspace.com. Yes. And, and share it if you think of someone else that might benefit from it. Definitely. We'll include the link in the show notes too. So you don't have to test your spelling. Okay. <laughs> well, Rebecca, it's been so great getting to know you and getting a glimpse into your brilliance. Yeah, thank you so much for including me. This is really fun for me. I don't get to talk about what I do as much as I do what I do. And this is kind of fun for me. So I love it. And thanks for sharing all of your information. And I can't wait to check out your course. That's going to be amazing. Yeah, cool. Awesome. All right. Well, I will see you all next week on Witches, Bitches, and Dead People. Peace and Badass Magic. Are you wading through the endless online noise only to be met with judgment and skepticism about your otherly interests? Enter Rooted in Magic, your haven of curated wisdom and fantastical knowledge. Join our private membership program designed for the magically curious. Visit rootedinmagic.com and start your journey of understanding who you are, why you're here, and where you're going. Embrace the magic within you at rootedinmagic.com.